Greetings, and welcome to another video from oduclass.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at an accounting-related uh, set of uh, options called uh, fiscal positions. And fiscal positions basically allow you to control what accounts uh, money go into uh, based upon the type of customers they are or um, other information uh, that you might assign inside of your quotes. So to get started, I've just created a new database here and uh, we're going to go ahead and load it up so everybody can be starting in the same place. And uh, I guess when this is done, this will come back again. So um, fiscal positions are something that you're going to want to install the accounting and finance application. That's one of the first things that we're going to do here. And basically what happens when a fiscal position is set up, you can go into the to the quote itself and say this is the fiscal position we want to use. And Odoo will automatically map the income and expense accounts uh, based on what you've set in that fiscal position. And... Um, the, there's a, a couple reasons you might want to do this and uh, one of the main ones is that uh, taxes are going to be different in different places so you might have different taxes in one area than different taxes in, in another and you don't want to have to manually set that uh, on a quote every time you need a way where you can say if we're in this certain territory here are the, the taxes uh, that we should get and everything that is in Odoo's fiscal position is always based upon whatever accounts and whatever taxes are within your product configuration. So now we are going to go ahead and install the sales module as well. So we've installed accounting and finance and then we're also going to install sales so that we have a way to create uh, quotes and can see how you can set those fiscal positions up uh, you know based upon on who the who the customers are and things like that. So now that we've got everything ready to go, everybody's in the same place. We're going to begin by going in the sales and looking at um, our products and creating a product. So let's go ahead and create a product. And we're going to use this as just a, an example of a consulting service. So we'll say uh, consulting services. So we don't have to do anything with manufacturing or inventory. We'll just say that this is going to be a service, and we'll sell it for seventy five dollars and we'll just go to we'll put a cost in and um, while we're also doing this we're gonna jump over and see a little bit inside of here what uh, how it how it's set up by default notice that we don't have anything in an income account we don't have anything in an expense account and that's because this is carried over from uh, what our internal category is so we don't have to set those here and for now for our example we'll just leave these taxes the same so that's all we're gonna do real simple product set up here. Now what we want to do is jump over into our accounting and we're going to set up a, a couple of other uh, things here. One of the things, and actually I'm going to do this in the sales I think. Uh, wait, where's our... I ended up doing this a different way last time. Let me do it this way. So I went to products, consulting services, and I clicked on internal category and this so this is where the income is going to go for these consulting services sales and these are where the expenses are going to go so that's important because what we're going to do with these fiscal positions is show how you can move uh, the money to different accounts based upon the the customer or if you want to get real specific on the quote itself so let's go ahead and and uh, look at our um, that we can see we got this category type we can go in here right now and say that well we want it to be sellable so that can change the category type right there and if we click on it we can see that it's the same product sales and expenses so let's create a consulting services income account we'll just use the same expenses it's, it works the same but we'll just focus for this example on the income account so we to create a new account we're gonna go over here to our chart of accounts and it makes it a little bit easier if we pick one that's of the same income type or the same account type so we pick product sales and everything else we want to keep the same we want it to show up inside of the same uh, place in our um, 
you know, profit loss statement and all those kind of things. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. And by duplicating, it also helps us with the numbers. And we're just going to make this uh, 2010. Instead of product sales, we'll call it consulting services. And go ahead and save that. And now we're going to add one more. And so um, what our example is going to be is that we're going to have our consulting services that we've always been doing. And then we're going to use an example that could be a real world example that we have decided we're going to start selling into the Canadian market that maybe we have some new clients and they're in Canada and we want to keep those sales in a different account then we want to keep the the, the sales from the US and so that's a, a pretty common thing because there's a lot of reasons you might want the that income in another account uh, for tax purposes, for sales uh, tax uh, and tax reasons, might be special, uh, you know, considerations in terms of looking at, at, your, at it from a marketing standpoint or, or on your balance sheet. You might just want to see the, you know, how much money is in one location versus another. And you could even take that down to this, you know, within the United States, where you might decide certain states you want their money to go to certain accounts and and so forth. We'll see more examples, but let's go ahead and duplicate and put in here the 2020, and we're gonna we're just gonna change this to Canadian Consulting Services. So two different accounts now: one Consulting Services, one Canadian Consulting Services. Let's jump back into our products, and I'm sorry. Well, we can go ahead and get to our internal category from there. And what we want to do is we want to change this uh, category or this sale saleable. We want to change this to, to use our consulting. So we'll go ahead and put consulting services for our income account. And we're just picking the consulting services for a reason because when we want to use the physical positions to automatically pick the other account. So let's see how an invoice looks now with just this standard setup we go to quotations we'll just make a customer call them acme and we don't need to set anything else up yet inside of here and we'll add a product and you'll see it's filled it out the price the taxes save and there's not going to be anything money wise as to what no, there's nothing in the fiscal position here as far as what account it goes to first we got to confirm the sale and create an invoice and this should all be familiar if you've looked at the essentials. If it if it's unfamiliar, you need a more basic video because this is looking, you know, obviously at fiscal positions. So now that we're here, we want we can see that that it's assigned at the right account. And when we validate, we can go into our journal entries and actually see that it got posted, and we can see that it got posted to consulting services just like it should. So far, so good. So now let's see where fiscal positions come in. So, because so so far up to this point, we've really just used this as a foundation. So make sure you understand how this basic uh, accounts work and how you can assign accounts to products through their categories at least. So now let's see how we can use these fiscal positions. Let's come down here under fiscal positions and configurations and create one. And we'll call this uh, Canadian Services. And the beauty of this is that we can just come in here right now, say account on the product services, and pick consulting services as the account that's on the product. Because remember, that's what is on the product now. And this might as well say product or product category. And the account to use instead will be Canadian Consulting Services. So while this is a simple example, you can map as many accounts as you need. And what will happen is when you post a transaction that has a p fiscal position applied, it's just going to take these accounts, whenever it sees this account, map it over to this account. So let's just do it that way at first, and we won't do it automatically. Instead, we'll do it manually. So you, this shows you how you could set up fiscal positions manually. Maybe a good use for this would be like for certain kinds of job costing or product uh, uh, things like that where you have a specific uh, for a specific product 
that uh, maybe you need to assign it just on a one-off or for under certain conditions that aren't real standard to another account. Like maybe it's a VIP customer and you never know for sure who you're going to need to move that or it's, or it's a special. That's another example of why you might use a fiscal position. You could use that right here. So you could imagine that this is a, a special and you want to put that money uh, to a, you know, a certain account to keep track of it. So what you can do is after we add our product here, is just come down here to other and choose the physical position. So you can imagine that this could be a special that you're running and you want to keep all the income from the special separate from the other income from your regular activities. And that could be a, a, a useful position uh, thing to do when you want to do this manually and just set it uh, not necessarily automatically. So now when we hit save, and confirm the sale and create our invoice we'll see what happens here notice how it switched the account over to here Canadian consulting services and because it's the same account type still an income account it's still going to show up on the balance sheet the same way the money still comes in the same way the customer is going to get billed the same way everything's going to stay the same except now it goes into the account that we wish it to uh, in this case Canada because that's what we set so now let's see how we can do it automatically. And to start with that, let's make our friend Acme here Canadian. So we jump in here, put in Canada, and save. And um, let's go ahead then, and let's make, while we're in here, another individual, Bob Sacramento. And we'll make them in the United States, just so we can see it both ways. Now, um, because we're moving along pretty good, we're just going to go ahead and uh, jump back to our fiscal position, and we'll see how to automate this. Go to our Canadian services and edit it, and there's this checkbox up here that says detect automatically, and you get the options for the VAT required, so that means that this fiscal position would be fired off whenever VAT was required, um, and then see that would make it possible to map all these things over to other income accounts or expense accounts based upon that which could be very handy for that situation um, in our case we can just we can pick Canada here because that's what what our use case is so that we know that we want Canada and notice how once we do that you can even pick a specific state you can pick specific zip ranges and these kind of things and so this is where you can get into a lot of detail over how you want a, a specific tax structure, account structure for for a, a given territory. So we've already set up an account mapping. Let's go ahead while we're at it and do the taxes the same way. So we pick the tax on the product and we pick the tax 15% here because that's the only one we're using. And what we want to then do is have it apply uh, a Canadian tax, like a different tax. So we'll just use this as an example. And so we'll say tax 4% Canadian as an example. And so we put our 4% in here. And we could specify uh, a different tax account as well if we wished. We'll leave it the same for now because that's, that's pretty straightforward. We're looking at the fiscal positions. And so you should be able to take it from here and make anything you want from it. So we're going to save it like that. And because we specified Canada, it's going to be anything in Canada. And we've got the tax that when it sees this 15%, if it's, uh, it falls within this fiscal position, it's going to apply this tax. And then it's also going to do the account mapping for us. So let's go back here to sales and quotations, create. And whenever you're testing this stuff, you always want to test it to make sure that it still works for the usual cases. So you go here to consulting services, 75, save, confirm the sale, create our invoice. And then on our invoices here, we see we got our generic consulting services and we still got our 15% tax. So everything would be just as you expect for a U.S. customer. So now let's say that we get another blank invoice and notice that the fiscal position, I'm sorry, I wanted to go over to quotes, another blank quote and you'll notice that if I pick Bob 
we don't get a fiscal position here. But as soon as I pick Acme, our fiscal position automatically fills in for us because it picked it up based on that geolocation. So it sets this for us automatically now. We can come back over to our order lines and add a line here. And notice how our tax, it pulled it right over here, tax 4% Canadian. So I can save. So we see it right there that it's already picked the right fiscal position for us. Or it's applied the taxes from the right fiscal position. We confirm the sale, create the invoice. Let's view it. And we'll see that we got our Canadian consulting service as well, 4% Canadian. So there you go. That's how fiscal positions work. You can see it's not that complicated once you understand it. And it's just a matter of starting out simple. Test one of your configurations. Make sure your accounts are lining up and everything is processed the way you expect. And then, um, then add another rule. Test it out. Once you're comfortable, maybe you can add more at a time. But always just make sure you test the results and don't just rely on filling in the fiscal positions and not running through some invoices and, and things like that to, to make sure everything is lining up here. And you could always not validate these if, if you needed to, if you were still trying to keep some numbers right or something. I always recommend with things, uh, configurations like this, go ahead and, and test in a sandbox. Uh, you know, really test it out first away from your live data so that you know when it's time for you to go in and make the changes in the real system that you got it exactly right. So with that said, I hope this video is helpful. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos, uh, please let us know. Thank you very much.